welcome back to the channel this is trinity storm and you were watching fifth part of what if naruto became wielder of universal weapon if you enjoyed this video please like share and subscribe to the channel now wasting no more time let's start the story naruto was walking down the street towards the hospital after passing by the namikaze compound to change his clothes and he told haku and fu about what had happened in the forest and they decided to follow him to the hospital as well but they were frowning with what he had told them about what had happened during the rest of the preliminary rounds. I can't believe Neji would do that to his own cousin, Hanada, Haku raged. He'd better not meet me, because I'll make him pay for hurting Hanada-chan, Fu said, and Chomei agreed. Naruto clenched his fist in rage, with Kurama and Shinami attempting to calm him down as he reflected on what had occurred during the match between the two Hyugas. Flashback begin. When the names for the next match appeared on the screen, Hanada began to shake in fear, and Naruto noticed Neji smirking with delight, but he was able to encourage her to fight with everything she had. Neji tried to talk her down at the arena, but she ignored him and stood up to him, much to his surprise and annoyance. The fight was close, with both combatants in a stalemate as Hanada landed several blows on the Hyuga prodigy, but the tides turned when Neji struck Hanada's chakra points in her arms, disabling her ability to use her gentle fist, and then attacked her brutally, striking her heart, much to Naruto's horror. Hanada struggled to her feet, refusing to give up the fight that made Naruto think of himself. Why don't you just quit? Fate has decided that you will not win this match because you are weak and helpless. Stop fighting fate, Neji said with a solemn expression. You say fate has decided this and that I should not fight it, but you are the one fighting fate. If you had accepted fate, you would not be fighting against the fate of the Hyuga clan's main and side branches, Hanada expressed her pain by clutching her chest. Hearing this enraged Neji, who charged at Hanada with the intent to kill, much to the surprise of the onlookers. But the Junin stopped him before he could get any closer. Enough, Neji. You said you wouldn't let clan matters cloud your judgment, Guy said. Why did you put a stop to me? Is this exclusive to members of the main branch? Neji asked, his teeth clenched. On the contrary, we stopped you in order to save your life, Kakashi explained. What exactly do you mean? He means you should look at your chest and see what would have happened if you had taken another step, a cold voice said sending shivers down the spine. Neji looked down to see a blade covered in green flames a few inches from his chest and traced it to Naruto's hand, which was glaring at him with barely contained rage. Suddenly, he heard a thud and turned to see Hanada had collapsed, and he dashed over to check on her, Sakura and Kurenai close behind. Hanada, please be okay. Said Naruto, his voice trembling. Naruto-kun. Did I do well? Hanada spoke up quietly. Yes, Hanada Haim, you did great, and I'm truly proud of you, Naruto said as he held Hanada's hands. Hanada smiled before closing her eyes and losing consciousness. The medics arrived and carried her to the emergency room, where she was treated in front of Naruto and Sakura. Naruto-kun, will Hanada be okay? Sakura worriedly asked. She'll be fine, Sakura-chan. After all, she's strong like you, Naruto said, placing his hand on her shoulder. Hello there. Naruto turned to glare at Neji, Kurama is attempting to keep her chakra from leaking out as a result of her rage at what the boy had done, and even Shinami was staring at him. Why do you support a weakling like her? She was destined to fail, or perhaps you support her because you, too, are a weakling. Let me tell you something. A loser is a loser forever. Naruto's eyes froze as he slowly reached for the hilt of Mumi no Tamanu. If that's what you think, I might have to change that, he was about to dash forward and slash him across the chest when he was stopped by Lee. Get out of my way, he says. I'm not sure how you really feel, but all fighting must take place in an official match. Someone defeating a prodigy through hard work will undoubtedly make for an exciting match, as I would like to fight him as well. 
However, if you end up fighting Neji, that is fine as well. Naruto still wanted to attack Neji, according to Lee, but his tenants spoke up. He has a point, Naruto-sama. If you attack him, you could be disqualified, Shinami said. She's right, if we get him in a match, there'll be no one to stop us from hurting him, Kurama, who had finally calmed down after hearing Lee's words, said. Before speaking up, Naruto took a deep breath to calm himself. Okay, Lee, you've persuaded me. Now I really want to play with you. Of course, I want to fight you, Lee said, striking a good guy pose. Naruto turned to face Neji, who gave him a smug look. If we ever meet on the arena, you better watch out, because I'm not showing any mercy, he said before returning to the upper levels. End of flashback. Soon, his rage turned to concern for Lee, who had the following match against Gaia. He continued to attack Taijutsu, but Gaia protected him with sand from her gourd. Many wondered why he wasn't using any ninjutsu until Gaia revealed that he couldn't because of his underdeveloped chakra circulatory system. Lee couldn't get past the sand no matter how many times he attacked, until Gaia told him to remove his leg weights. When he did, Lee's speed increased dramatically, to the point where the sand ninja struggled to keep up, and he was able to land a direct hit on Gaia, much to the surprise of the sand ninja. But when it was revealed that Gaia was wearing sand armor, Lee tried to finish her off with a primary lotus, a double-edged sword that put a serious strain on his body. Gaia, on the other hand, survived the attack and proceeded to pummel Lee, forcing him to use his trump card, which is to open the eight inner gates. After opening five of the inner gates, he began attacking Gaia with a high-speed combo that even the sand couldn't keep up with, something Naruto noticed he could keep up with when using the clock up, and he was holding back on Haku at the time, and used Hidden Lotus, leaving his muscles torn and body fatigued. Gaia used the sand to cushion her fall before crushing Lee's arm and legs. She would have continued had Gai not intervened to end the match. The next and final match was between Choji and Dosu, but it ended quickly with Dosu knocking Choji out with his melody arm, giving him the win. Later, the winners gathered, and Hiruzen had them draw numbers and be assigned matchups, which were as follows. Neji Hayuga vs. Naruto Uzumaki Gara of the Sand vs. Sasuke Uchiha Shino Abarame vs. Konkuru Tamari vs. Shikamaru Nara Dosu Kinuda vs. Sakura Haruno Hiruzen then informs them that the final phase of the exam will be a tournament in which any or all of them may have a chance to become Chunin based on how they perform in a match, and that they only have a month to prepare. Everyone then left the tower and returned to the village. When they arrived at the hospital, Naruto inquired about Hanada's room and was directed to it. When Naruto and the others entered the designated room and opened the door, they saw Hiyashi Hayuga sitting next to Hanada's bed with a younger girl who resembled her but had longer hair. Sorry, Hiyashi-sama, we didn't know you'd be here, Naruto said, bowing to the man. He had gone to see him for Hanada's hand in marriage, though he was terrified when Hiyashi accepted but gave him the overprotective father speech, much to the amusement of Kurama and Shinami. It's no trouble at all, I just wanted to check on my daughter, Hiyashi explained. Despite the fact that he may appear cold on the outside, he cares deeply for his daughters and still harbors regrets for what happened back then. I believe you two have never met. This is Hanabi, my second daughter. It's a pleasure to meet you, Hanabi said, bowing and receiving a bow back from Naruto and the girls. I'll be leaving then, Naruto-san, best of luck in the finals, Hiyashi was about to leave when Hanabi spoke up. May I stay a little longer, father? And received a nod of approval from the man before he left. So you're the little firecracker Hanada always talked about, Naruto smirked, making the girl blush with embarrassment. Please don't call me that. As long as it makes you feel at ease around me, Naruto rubbed her head gently, making Hanabi smile even brighter. 
I can see why Nei Chan likes you now. And she's not the only one, Fu added, and Haku agreed. Wait. You like him too, and Nei Chan doesn't mind? Why is this so? Hanabi inquired. Because Naruto-kun is the head of an almost extinct clan, the CRA applies to him, and we know he will love all of us equally, Haku said, lovingly hugging Naruto from behind. Hanabi was initially angry with Naruto, but she could tell by looking at him that he would never hurt her sister. How is she? Asked Naruto, concernedly looking at Hanada sleeping on the bed. The doctor said she'll be fine, and she should be able to recover in time for the finals, said the mother. Good, she says, because I want her to see me beat the stoicism out of Neji for what he did to Hanada-chan. Please be cautious when dealing with Neji. He's known to be a Jukin genius. Not only that, but we need to figure out why Neji despises Hanada and the main branch in general, Shinami said. I'll be leaving you girls because I have a feeling Gigi will want to meet me, so I'll see you later. Sakura-chan will pay us a visit later, Naruto then exited the hospital, and as he passed through the entrance, an Anbu member wearing a cat mask appeared in front of him. Uzumaki-san, Lord Hokage wishes to speak with you, says the Hokage. All right, and I apologize for not having time to spar with you. It's understandable because you're currently taking Chunin exams, the female ninja said before placing a hand on Naruto and using the body flicker technique to transport them to the Hokage Tower. When they arrived at the office, they found Hiruzen and his shadow clones finishing up paperwork. I see your remaining life is now easier with shadow clones, eh Gigi? Smirked Naruto. You don't know the half of it. I have a feeling the previous Hokages will never let me hear the end of it when the time comes for me to go to the afterlife," Hiruzen said, a sweat drop forming on his brow as he could swear he heard them laughing at him. How about you play a prank on the next Hokage by not telling them to use shadow clones to do the paperwork, Hiruzen and his clones chuckled darkly. That's not a bad idea. I can just sit back and watch them sweat away with the solution in front of them. Anyway. Anko informed me of your encounter with a former student of mine. Yeah, too bad old Snakey escaped because we would have turned him into a human snake wallet. But I have the impression that he did not take us seriously. I also discovered that the cursed seal he placed on Sasuke is much stronger than the one he placed on Anko-chan, and I was unable to remove it. Hiruzen sighed deeply, regretting having let Orochimaru live and the consequences that followed. The next time we meet, I'll finish it once and for all," he said before turning to Naruto. Kakashi placed a restraining seal on Sasuke to prevent the seal from taking over, so you won't have to worry about it for a while, Naruto nodded, but he wasn't sure. Alright, Gigi, I'll have to go start training because Sakura-chan has gone to Anko-chan for that, Naruto said as he turned to leave. Actually, Naruto, I've found someone who will train you, says Naruto. Who exactly? I'd rather not say, but I'm confident you'll recognize the individual when you both, Hiruzen mentally made a mental note to prepare his crystal ball. You'll find him at the hot springs, he said. Alright, I'll be heading there now, see you later Gigi, Naruto said as he left the tower for the hot springs, while Hiruzen took out the crystal ball and prepared to record the scene. Later. Naruto had arrived at the hot springs and was looking for the person who would assist him with his finals preparations. What type of person do you think he is for Gigi to recommend? As long as he's not a pervert, I should be fine with him, Karama said. Then they heard giggling and turned to see someone squatting close to a fence, dressed like a kabuki dancer and wearing a horned headband with the kanji for oil displayed in the center. His long spiky white hair is tied into a ponytail, and he has two tattoos under each eye that look like bloody tear streaks. That no good pervert is peeping on the women in the hot springs. Raged Karama. Don't worry, Ku-chan, I have a plan to deal with him, Naruto joked as he summoned the Cooper Kane. Then, slowly approaching the man until he was directly behind him, 
Naruto raised his cane above his head and swung at the man, sending him flying right into the women's bath. They heard a splash, then women screaming, followed by the man's screams of pain, which Naruto mocked. It serves the pervert right, that's what he gets for invading a woman's privacy, Kurama said, and Shinami agreed. Hey there, brat. Naruto turned to see the man stomping towards him, covered in bruises and with some of his clothes torn, what made you do that? You ruined my data collection. What you call, data gathering, is nothing more than peering into the women's bath, Naruto deadpanned. Do you have no idea who I am? I am the great toad sage of Mount Myoboku, the all-powerful Jiraiya. Exclaimed the man. Then he noticed the blonde standing before him had a blank expression on his face. Are you going to say anything? No, I'm going to do something, she says. And what is it going to be? Jiraiya received his response in the form of an uppercut to the chin as he was propelled into the air before crashing to the ground. He stood up to yell at the boy but had to quickly avoid a fireball that was shot at him. What in the world was that for? Just a greeting for my godfather after not seeing him in 12 years, Naruto said, his anger visible in his eyes. Jiraiya's eyes widened as he heard what he had heard. And Naruto? When Naruto jumped at him, Jiraiya rolled to the side to avoid a slash from Tsukiyotoshi. Where the hell have you been all this time? Yelled Naruto, who continued to attack the man. You must understand, Naruto. I had to look after my spy network for, the toad sage felt a knee in the gut followed by a punch to the face. That is the most ridiculous excuse I've ever heard. So it never occurred to you to write me a letter just to see how I was doing. The gravity of those words hit Jiraiya hard, and he realized how much he had hurt his godson by not being there for him since his birth. Knowing how a Jinchuriki is treated made him feel no better as he slid down against a wall. You are correct. I should have been there for you but wasn't. I understand that saying sorry isn't enough, and if you don't want me in your life, I'm willing to accept that. Naruto took a step forward and raised his fist to punch Jiraiya again. He looked at the man for a moment before striking, only to strike the wall just inches away from his head. Naruto turned and walked away, only to come to a halt after a few steps. You're right that saying sorry won't be enough, Naruto said, Jiraiya's head slumped. Which is why, if you want to patch things up with me, we can start with my training. Jiraiya raised his head to look at Naruto, hopeful in his eyes. Thank you. You won't be sorry. I hope not, we'll meet tomorrow near the river, Naruto said as he walked away from the Namikaze compound. Jiraiya simply sighed knowing that this was not the way he wanted to bond with his godson. He decided to meet Hiruzen to get some information before going to a sake bar. Damn, I never thought I'd be doing the same thing as Tsunade, Jiraiya grumbled as he approached the Hokage Tower. Naruto and Jiraiya met the next morning at a riverside with a waterfall nearby. So, pervy sage, what kind of training are we doing? Naruto inquired. Why are you calling me that? Jiraiya inquired, his brow furrowed. Because you're both a wise man and a pervert, I'm going to call you that whether you like it or not. Jiraiya wanted to complain, but he reasoned that being given a nickname was Naruto's way of gradually opening up to him. So Sensei told me everything that had happened and what was going on now. The first technique I'll teach you is summoning jutsu. What kind of jutsu is that? Asked Naruto, unaware that his question caused the mysterious scroll to glow. It is a teleportation technique with a blood contract signed with all kinds of creatures, then you can summon them whenever you want. That sounds like what old Snakey did back in the forest with that giant snake, I can't help but think they're related, Jiraiya laughed at Naruto's nickname for his former teammate. I see you understand it. Now let me show you how summoning jutsu is done. Jiraiya bit his thumb to draw blood before slamming it on the floor, 
creating a seal matrix, followed by a puff that faded to reveal Jiraiya standing on a large with a scroll held with its tongue. In Naruto's pouch, the mystery scroll shone brighter. All you have to do now is sign the contract and you should be able to summon the toads, says the author. Naruto was about to take the summoning scroll when the storage scroll flew out of his pouch and unrolled itself, releasing the mystery scroll, much to Jiraiya's consternation. The scroll unrolled itself, revealing it to be a summoning scroll with strange symbols he had never seen before. What's going on? Naruto inquired. I'm not sure, but where did you get this scroll? Naruto then explained how he discovered the scroll. It appears that the scroll wishes for you to sign the contract. But isn't there a single contract? Those who sign a single contract normally only have enough chakra to summon. However, there are ninjas nearby with large amounts of chakra who can summon a variety of creatures by signing multiple contracts. You are of the latter, being a Jinchuriki, so you can sign it. Alright then, Naruto bit his thumb before writing his full name on the scroll and placing his fingerprints at the bottom. The scroll then glowed brightly before shrinking and rolling back into his pouch. Try the summoning now, and let's see who the boss of the contract is, Jiraiya said. Naruto performed the hand signs and slammed his palm on the ground, releasing a puff of white smoke that cleared to reveal a creature that Jiraiya instinctively knew no one had ever seen before. And to think I thought I'd seen everything, this godson of mine will undoubtedly spice things up around here. Naruto also signed the toad contract and met Gamabunta, the toad boss, after meeting with the creature. Gamabunta recognized the boy as Minato's son but decided to put him to the test by having Naruto stay on his back while he jumped around until Naruto passed by the skin of his teeth and had to rest for three days. Jiraiya was impressed with Naruto's level of Fuinjutsu, Ninjutsu, and Kenjutsu, but he still helped him polish his skills by sparring with him. Naruto remained angry with him over time, but he would occasionally smile and laugh with him. Naruto frequently summons the creatures in secret and trains with them in preparation for summoning them when the time comes. Jiraiya had to run like hell when he met Naruto's Fianca copyright S, who were angry at him for not being there for his godson, much to Naruto's amusement. He had also received a message from Inari via the scroll, wishing him luck in the finals and informing him of the Land of Waves recovery. Soon, it was the night before the finals, and Naruto lay in his bed, thinking about the match ahead. I don't know what will happen tomorrow, but I can tell it's going to be wild. He then closed his eyes and fell asleep. The day of the Chunin exam finals had finally arrived, and many people of high status were arriving in the village and heading towards the stadium with excitement and anticipation to see the participants compete in the tournament to become Chunin. Naruto had just awoken in the Namikaze compound and was stretching to get the kinks out of his bones when he noticed a large number of people walking around. Good morning, Ku-chan and Shinami-san, Naruto thought. Good morning, Naru-kun, Kurama said cheerfully. Good morning, Naruto-sama, I hope you're well rested for your finals today, Shinami smiled. Of course, Today is the day I make my ninja debut and rip Neji a new one for hurting Hanada-chan, Naruto said as he performed some flips. I should go see how Haku-chan and Fu-chan are doing. Naruto dressed and prepared to go downstairs to the kitchen, but there was no one there except for a breakfast spread and a note on the table, so he walked over and picked up the note to read. Naruto-kun. We went ahead of you to the stadium, but we left breakfast for you to eat. We'll meet up at the stadium, so don't be late. Win and teach that Neji a lesson he'll never forget. Also, don't worry about Tora-chan. Fu and Haku. Naruto smiled warmly and went ahead to eat his breakfast before leaving the house, but he decided to take a detour by walking through the training grounds, where he saw Hanada standing near the wooden posts. What are you doing here, Hanada-chan? I assumed you'd be with the other girls at the stadium, Naruto inquired. Oh and Naruto-kun, I just w wanted to go for a walk before going to the stadium, Hanada explained shyly. I see, 
There's something I'd like to ask you. What exactly is it? It's about why Neji appears to despise you so much. He tried to kill you and would have succeeded if the Junins hadn't intervened. I intend to inflict severe pain on him for what he did, Naruto said with rage in his voice. Hinata appeared shaken before stammering, P please don't hurt H him too much. Why should I not? Because he wasn't always this way, did everything change after the incident with the hidden cloud? Then Hinata proceeded to tell him about how a peace treaty had reached the country of Lightning, who dispatched an ambassador from the hidden cloud village to the hidden leaf to finalize it. However, one night, someone infiltrated the Hyuga compound and abducted Hinata, though during his retreat he met Hiyashi, who was on a nightly patrol. Hiyashi immediately killed the ninja, but when he revealed his identity, it was none other than the ambassador who had. Naruto was enraged because he suspected they wanted to use her as a breeding tool for the Byakugan. Hinata continued, saying that the hidden cloud village demanded that the person who killed their ambassador be killed as well, or there would be war. Not wanting that to happen, the Hidden Leaf agreed, but who they offered was not Hiyashi but his twin brother Hazashi, who was Neji's father from the branch family, as the caged bird seal would seal away. I can understand why Neji's so angry at the main family, but his reasons for attacking you aren't justified, so I'm still going to deck him for hurting you, though not as much since you asked me so nicely, the blonde said. Naruto was about to say something else when they heard the fireworks. Hanada blushed bright red and twiddled her fingers shyly. The tournament is about to begin, Naruto-sama, you'll have to hurry over there or you'll be disqualified, Chinami said, to which Naruto nodded and called out, channeling chakra to his bracelet. Ride the wing highway. Then the air treks appeared on his feet, and Naruto skated over, picking up a blushing Hanada in a bridal carry. Hold on tight as the Uzumaki Express transports you to your destination. Naruto sped towards the stadium while avoiding civilians along the way, creating a shadow clone and passing Hanada to it. I'll meet you with the others later, they both split up and Naruto headed towards the arena's entrance. In the middle of the tunnel, Naruto made the air treks disappear and skidded on the ground until he stopped before the other competitors, Sakura smiling happily at him, I'm not running late, am I? As annoying as it is, you're not, Shikamaru said. Naruto took a look around and noticed that some of the competitors were missing. What happened to Sasuke and that sound nin? I'm not sure, and it'll be a pain if they don't show up. Sit down and present yourself properly before the spectators, said the Chunin standing in front of them. Naruto smirked as he looked up to see the crowds cheering loudly. This is it girls, this is where we let the world know who we are, he said. And we'll be with you all the way, Naru kun Kurama promised. We'll always be by your side, Chinami promised. Before Naruto arrived, most of the rookie genin had arrived, including Ino, who had arrived with Choji, who was carrying a large bag full of potato chips and had just opened one of them and was munching away, Tenten, who was sitting elsewhere in regular clothes because she had come to spectate, Kiba, and Akamaru, who had also arrived and were sitting near Ino and Shoji. Hiruzen sat in the cage box with the case cage of the hidden sand village, who had been invited to watch the finals, and Hiyashi and his daughter Hanabi were also in the crowd, though Hanabi was more excited to see Naruto because of his playfulness. Except for Naruto-kun, Sasuke-kun, and that sound ninja, everyone is here. Where could they possibly be? Ino was perplexed when she heard footsteps approaching her and turned to see Haku and Fu looking at her intently. Naruto-kun told us what happened at the preliminary round, Haku said, to which Ino nodded meekly. Then tell us what you see Naruto-kun is, and we'll tell you the truth, Fu said. If she's like those villagers, we'll be her worst enemies, Chomei predicted. Ino remembered speaking to Naruto during the one month of training. Flashback begin. Naruto had brought Ino to the top of the Hokage monument and told her everything except his lineage and what had happened to Sakura, leaving the female blonde speechless. 
So the villagers despised you not because of your pranks, but because they thought you were the reincarnation of the Kyubi? Ino inquired. Yes, they just couldn't get over their grief and decided to blame me, which is what led to my dream of becoming Hokage so that they'll see me for who I truly am and my desire to protect them, Naruto said as he looked down on the village. But if you wanted to be Hokage, why are you always acting silly and messing around? Ino was asked to recall how he acted back then. What you saw back then was me putting on a mask to hide my true feelings as many tried to stymie my advancement in the academy, but as time passed, my mask began to do more harm than good, and I saw being a ninja as nothing more than fun and games. But before graduation, I realized that if I wanted to be a shinobi, I needed to take things much more seriously, which is why I looked and acted so differently, this my true self, Naruto stated. Ino remained silent because she understood what he meant. She belongs to a clan of mind walkers who wear an emotional mask to hide their true feelings, and then she heard Naruto speak up again. Now that you know, how do you perceive me? Is it the fox in human skin, or the fox in a container? I won't rush you for an answer, so I'll wait for it. Just remember that this is an S-rank secret, so telling anyone will result in death, but only a select few are aware of it, Naruto turned and walked away, leaving Ino to sort out her thoughts. End of flashback. Ino had been thinking of an answer for when she saw Naruto again ever since, and when she finally came up with one, she turned to Haku and Fu and gave her answer. I see Naruto for who he truly is, not what others see him as, Ino said, and Haku and Fu both smiled happily. We're glad to hear that, and I'm sure Naruto and the others will be as well, Hanada, who was coming down the stairs to meet them, said. Oh, Hanada-chan, you arrived. Fu exclaimed happily. Yes, Naruto had his clone drop me off on his way to meet the others. Oh, there he is, Haku said, pointing to the arena, and the others turned to see Naruto skidding on the ground next to the other competitors. I'm excited to see how Naruto fights in the rounds. Chomei was overjoyed. Me too, Cho Chan, Fu thought. Hiruzen was conversing with the Kaze Cage at the cage box. Good to see you again, Lord Kaze Cage, Hiruzen said with a smile. It's Lord Hokage, and I see you're still active despite the years. Isn't it time to start thinking about who will be the next Hokage? Kaze Cage stated. I may be old, but as long as I can move these old bones, I'll defend the hidden leaf until my dying breath. I see. The case cage, who had been staring at Hiruzen intently before turning to face the arena below, said. Down in the arena, Genma Shiranui, the proctor, turned to face them and took a piece of paper from his flak jacket and held it out for them. The matchups have changed slightly, so take a look and know who your opponent is. They looked at the schedule and noticed that the matchups were the same, except Shikamaru and Tamari had an extra match with Sakura, which meant that Dosu was out of the finals. I guess I'll be facing Shikamaru or Tamari later, Sakura reasoned. I'm still up against Neji, and I wouldn't have it any other way, Naruto reasoned. Will you go all out, Naruto-sama? Chinami inquired. He's definitely got it coming. But before we begin with the matches, we've got a program set up, so please vacate the area until it's over, Genma said, and the Genins all left except Naruto much to everyone's surprise, before Genma smirked and used the body flicker jutsu to leave. Naruto smirked as he took a scroll from his pouch and unrolled it, channeling chakra into the seal. There was a puff of smoke and it cleared to reveal a stage with Naruto holding a guitar and his clones behind a drum kit and another holding a flute. Okay, guys, let's get this party started. They then began to play. Naruto slammed his palm on the stage, causing a puff of smoke to appear, revealing a scroll in his hands. Who would have thought Naruto could sing so well? Chomei was cheering Naruto from the mindscape while he was singing, said Fu. When we were in the land of waves, Naruto-kun performed a song for the children at the orphanage. 
We'll have to get him to sing for us some time, Haku said, to which the others agreed. You gotta love Fuinjutsu, Naruto smirked as Genma reappeared in front of him and Neji exited the competitor's box. That was a fantastic performance, but let's get this game started. The match between will now begin. You might as well give up. Fate has decreed that I will win this match, Neji said, adopting the Juken stance. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I've come too far to just give up, and I have a debt to collect, Naruto said, bouncing on the tips of his toes. A debt? Surely you haven't forgotten that you owe Hanada-chan an apology. We'll see about that. I can't wait to see your despair when I show you that fate cannot be defied, he says. Enough chit-chat, let's get to the fight. Naruto hurled a couple of kanai at Neji and dashed in a zigzag pattern, but Neji caught one of the kanai and deflected the others before Naruto could reach him. What is he doing? It's too dangerous to go up close with a Hyuga! exclaimed Kiba, expecting Naruto to attack from afar. That is under normal circumstances, but don't underestimate Naruto. Remember, he was able to defeat you back then, Haku said. Naruto aimed a fist towards Neji's face but it was parried to the side so he put a palm on the ground and did a handstand and flipped away, he went with a palm thrust only for Neji to parry it again but he was ready this time as he adjusted his arm and slammed an elbow into the Hyuga's chest much to his shock, knocking him back and performed a flying kick to send him further away. This irritated Neji, who charged at Naruto, who switched to the praying mantis stance and began attacking. Naruto deflected the attacks as they came at him, but a few were able to graze him, forcing him to quickly jump back and use teleport to gain some distance from Neji. As you can see and feel, there's no way you can beat me and defy fate, Neji said, and Naruto simply smirked and stretched his body slightly. Then I might as well kick things into high gear, Naruto said, crossing his middle and index fingers together, shadow clone jutsu. Four of his clones appeared and took various stances, some of which were the same. Alright, guys, let's get started. Roger boss! exclaimed the clones before charging at the Hyuga. That's a very smart move by Naruto, Haku said. What do you mean? Ino inquired. The Byakugan can see the chakra and its circulatory system. And because Naruto has evenly distributed his chakra to all of his clones, Neji won't know who the original is, Hanada explained. But he has to be careful because it only takes one hit to dispel a shadow clone, Fu expressed concern. Don't worry, Fu Chan, Naruto has Kurama Nichan to help him win, Chomei assured her. After the first clone had approached Neji and engaged him in close combat in the Praying Mantis style, Another clone appeared in midair and charged in with a dive kick. Neji anticipated the attack and grabbed the clone with the intention of using it as a shield, but the attacking clone saw this and dispelled itself at the last second, surprising Neji and allowing the grabbed clone to break free from Neji's grip and throw him across the field. Neji landed after riding himself in midair when a clone appeared in front of him and grabbed his collar. Gotcha and began getting punched in the face before being thrown again. Wow! The kids got good coordination with his shadow clones. I guess he figured he should fight from a distance, Asuma said as he lit another cigarette. That is true for any regular shinobi, but my time as Naruto's sensei has taught me that he has a different way of dealing with things like this, so you just keep watching, Kurenai proudly stated. Neji was busy defending himself against the clones that kept attacking from different directions, then he suddenly smirked, your strategy is quite flawed, then he quickly dashed through the clones before slamming a palm into a particular Naruto which didn't dispel, I figured that the one that doesn't attack would be the real one, the other clones started to dispel as if to confirm Neji's theory, but Naruto simply snickered at him. Bzzzt asterisk wrong, boss wouldn't use such an obvious strategy, Naruto, smirked before disappearing in a puff of smoke, much to Neji's surprise. He quickly turned around to see Naruto and three of his clones attacking from various angles. Flight kick. Kick a bicycle. 
Kick a dive. Dark kick. Neji began spinning on his axis while releasing chakra from his body to form a spinning dome when it appeared that the attacks would connect. Naruto and his clones were thrown back, forcing them to flee, and he skidded backwards. What was that technique? It's almost like Kung Lao's spin, but much different, Naruto wondered, winced from his injuries. Isn't that father? Hanabi inquired. Yes, that's the eight trigrams palm rotation, but how? Only the main family knew that technique, said Hiyashi, as Hanabi and the other girls watched the battle with concern, wondering what Naruto would do next. Since he'll use that when I get close, let's try a different approach. Shadow Clone Jutsu Naruto summoned more clones and they began going through several hand gestures. Fireball in grand style. Lighting bolt. Is the lighting style. Air bullet. Says the wind. As the jutsus were about to strike Neji, he quickly spun around to deflect them all. Naruto teleported in front of Neji and performed a roundhouse kick, but the Hyuga dodged the attack and landed a palm strike on his chest, causing Naruto to stumble backwards. I've got you right where I want you, you're within range of my eight trigrams, Neji said, taking a stance that the Hyuga members immediately recognized. What kind of stance is that? Kiba inquired, and Hanada responded with a shaken voice. That, along with the rotation, is a technique known only to members of the main family. If Neji knows how to perform it, Naruto-kun is in big trouble. Gentle Fist Art. 8 trigrams 64 palms, Neji dashed forward and struck Naruto, 2 palms. He felt his chakra stop flowing where he was hit and tried to retreat, but Neji persisted. 4 palms. 8 palms. 16 palms. 32 palms. 64 palms. Naruto was knocked down by the force of the attacks, while Hinata and the others were readily watched. Damn he got me, I can't feel my chakra throughout my body, Naruto said. From that technique, all of your chakra points have been closed, Naruto-sama, Chinami said. I'll need your chakra, Ku-chan, to force open my chakra points, Naruto thought as he struggled to his feet. All right, Naruto-kun, just say the word, and I'll do it, Kurama said. You would have been proud of him brother, to be able to perform that technique without being taught, Hiyashi thought. Come on, Naruto-kun, you can't give up now, Tenten reasoned. It's best you give up. I've struck all your chakra points so you can use your jutsus. You've lost just as fate predicted, Neji sneered. I'm sorry, but you still have a debt to pay, and besides, I'm a total jerk when it comes to giving up, Naruto explained. How come you defy fate? Unlike you, I follow my own path and refuse to let anyone tell me what to do. I've heard about what happened to your father, but all I see is that you're using fate as a crutch, which I intend to change. What do you possibly know, how could you know how it feels to be cursed with a mark, one that can never be removed? Yelled Neji, while Naruto and Fu clenched their fists and their tenants felt depressed, Gaia, on the other hand, was unconcerned despite a light glare at Neji. Believe me when I say I know how it feels, more than you have or will ever have, which is why I can't afford to lose to someone like you. Naruto exclaimed as he faced Neji, Ku-chan, do it. Alright, Naruto-kun, Kurama said as she sent her chakra through Naruto's body, and Neji was astounded to see red chakra flow through Naruto's chakra circulatory system, reopening his chakra points. How is this possible? I closed all of your chakra points. I'd rather you worry about what happens next, Naruto said before raising his hand to reveal the bracelet, which made everyone who knew about it smile. Looks like Naruto is finally going to use it, Haku speculated. Neji's in for it now, Fu exclaimed with delight. Go for it, Naruto! exclaimed Chomei joyfully. That's right, Naruto-kun, you still have that, 
Tenton thought. You're about to make your presence known in the shinobi world, Hiruzen thought fondly, oblivious to the fact that the case cage was staring at Naruto intently as he pulled out the bracelet. You're about to see something that makes me proud of my student, Kurenai said, attracting Asuma's attention. Naruto channeled Chakra into the bracelet and exclaimed, Reborn. There was a bright glow before it faded to reveal him wearing a pair of red gloves with orange cross and flame designs at the base and a silver ring at the index finger on his right hand, he is also seen wearing headphones at his ears and orange contacts on his eyes, as well as a leg bangle on his left leg. Get ready to be defeated by my dying will!" yelled Naruto as a tongue of flame appeared on his brow before charging at Neji. While attacking, Neji noticed that whatever attack he launched, Naruto would react to and counter, almost as if he were a Sharingan user. He deflected a punch but then noticed Naruto smirking. That's a bad move for you, the gloves caught fire, forcing Neji to back up and remove the bandages from his right hand. Naruto dashed towards Neji and attempted a ferocious punch at the Hyuga, but a rotation deflected the attack and threw him into the air. Naruto quickly flipped in midair and then shot flames from his gloves, causing him to hover in midair. Whoa, Naruto's flying. That's pretty cool man! exclaimed Kiba, to which Akamaru agreed. Naruto dove to the ground and straight at Neji, who did another rotation, but Naruto had planned for it as he sped around the spinning chakra dome, forming a ring of fire. Extreme. He exclaimed as he ascended to the sky, forming a blazing tornado. Neji jumped out of the flames and rolled on the ground to put out the fire on his clothes. I will not lose to you. Gentle fist art. 8 trigrams 64 palms. Neji charged in. Then Naruto lit up the gloves in flames again, this time focusing on Neji as he attacked two palms. The first two strikes were blocked. Four palms. Eight palms. Sixteen palms. Thirty-two palms. Sixty-four palms. Naruto had deflected all of Neji's palm strikes and then punched him in the chest, sending him skidding backwards. How can you possibly block all of my attacks? exclaimed Neji. It's a power that comes with these gloves called Hyper Intuition, and it removes the limits of my mind and releases my hidden awareness, which is why I was able to block your attacks because I could sense them coming, Naruto explained. I don't care. Fate has decreed that I am the winner, and I will not lose. Neji lost all sense of reason and charged in blindly, while Naruto shook his head and stood with his legs apart, rearing his hand back as flames gathered around it and took the shape of a lion's head. It's over, Neji. Naruto slammed a blazing uppercut into Neji's chin, launching him into the air before crashing into the ground and not rising. Naruto approached the Hyuga and fixed his gaze on him. How could I have lost, and how could you have defied fate? Neji wondered. I've failed the exams three times in a row, which I'm sure you would have considered my fate, but it was thanks to those whom I consider precious that helped me be who I am now, which is why I train hard to get stronger so that I can protect them. So let me ask you this, if a so-called dead last, like me could defy fate, then what can a genius like you do? Said Naruto before turning and walking. Winner of the match, Naruto Uzumaki announced Genma Shiranui, and the audience erupted in applause. The younger generation was awestruck, with many wishing to be ninjas, while the older generation was shocked and fearful of offending him in any way. That was totally serious, I feel lucky he didn't use it against me, Kiba said, and Akamaru shivered at the thought. Naruto-kun, you're the best! Fu exclaimed joyfully. Yay! Naruto-kun won! exclaimed Chome, who had sprouted wings from her back and was happily flying around. Thank you, Naruto-kun, Hanada thought as she gazed lovingly at Naruto. You're so incredible, Naruto-kun. I can't wait to spend more time with you, Tenten thought. 
It's about time Neji got your letter, brother, Hiyashi thought as Hanabi smiled at Naruto's victory over Neji. When Naruto entered the competitor's box, he was greeted with a hug from Sakura, who was overjoyed that he had won the match. Congratulations, Naruto-kun. You defeated Neji. Of course Sakura-chan, was there any doubt? Naruto said, a sly grin on his face. You've really become more troublesome than ever before, Naruto, Shikamaru said with a small smile, while Konkuru was wary, Shino was stoic, and Gaia was staring at Naruto. As the tournament progressed, Konkuru forfeited the match, much to the chagrin of the audience. Shikamaru wanted to forfeit, but Naruto wouldn't let him, so he kicked him into the arena. It was a match between Shadow and Wind, and although Shikamaru eventually captured Tamari, he forfeited the match due to low chakra. Naruto had to shake his head in amusement at his friend's chronic laziness. The match between Sasuke and Gaia was quickly approaching, but the Uchiha was still missing. The proctor was about to disqualify Sasuke when he arrived with Kakashi in a shower of leaves at the last minute. As the match began, Sasuke surprised everyone by moving at speeds comparable to Lee's when he removes his weights. After being pummeled by the Uchiha's high-speed attacks, Gaia formed a sand dome around herself, and whenever Sasuke attempted to attack, the sand would produce spikes. Then Sasuke climbed to the top of the stadium wall and performed some hand signs, after which Naruto and the others heard many birds chirping and saw lightning flash from Sasuke's hand. Gai, who had accompanied Lee to the stadium, explained to them that the jutsu used by Sasuke is in a ranked assassination technique known as Chidori belonging to Kakashi. Hearing this made Naruto watch the technique with interest. Sasuke ran down the wall and towards the dome, picking up speed and piercing through the sand and into Gaia's right shoulder, causing her to scream in pain and horror. Suddenly, Sasuke screamed in pain as he gripped his arm and jumped back, and a clawed arm covered in purple markings burst out before returning to the dome, much to everyone's surprise, and Naruto heard Kurama call out to him. Naruto-kun, I recognize that arm. It belongs to Shukaku-chan. It's as if she's attempting to take over Gaia's body, but it's definitely not like her. Kurama expressed concern. Then there's got to be something else going on. Naruto thought as white feathers began to fall from the sky and he fell asleep, but a pulse from Kurama's chakra woke him up and he saw many ninjas jumping around and fighting the leaf ninjas. What in the world is going on? We're being invaded by the sand and sound villages, Kakashi said as he landed next to him. Naruto clenched his fists and the bracelet glowed slightly. Not on my watch, he said. Naruto looked around the stadium and noticed that everyone was dozing off due to the effects of the genjutsu, with the exception of a few who were able to dispel it. Naruto then felt something approaching from behind and teleported to appear behind a sound ninja, wrapping his arms around the ninja's waist and performing a suplex that knocked the ninja out. That was a most youthful move, Naruto. Gaia exclaimed with a good guy pose, and Naruto and his tenants couldn't help but sweat drop when Kakashi appeared next to them, Sakura by his side. Naruto-kun. He exclaimed, turning to see Haku and Fu approaching him. Naruto-kun, what's going on here? As far as I can tell, we're being invaded by both the sound and sand villages, Naruto said, looking at the sound ninjas in front of them. Naruto-kun, look over there. Naruto saw a large four-sided purple barrier with Hiruzen held at knife point by the case cage within it. What is the case cage doing with Gigi? Raged Naruto. That's not the case cage, Naruto, take another look, Kakashi said. Naruto took a closer look and realized it was Orochimaru beneath the robes. Orochimaru? What is he doing here? He had to be the one who planned the invasion, Kurama speculated. Naruto and Sakura, I need you to release the genjutsu on Shikamaru for an important mission, Kakashi said. Sakura moved over to Shikamaru and was about to release the genjutsu when Naruto stopped her. 
How come you stop me, Naruto-kun? I have a way to wake him up, Naruto said, bending down and whispering into Shikamaru's ear, Oh Shikamaru, if you don't wake up, I'm going to tell your mother that you've been pretending to sleep while the invasion has been going on, I wonder what kind of punishment she would have for you. Shikamaru immediately stood up, terrified, while Naruto and his tenants laughed at him. So you were pretending to sleep the whole time? Sakura yelled angrily. At first, I found it a drag, but not any longer now that Naruto has brought up the issue of my mother, Shikamaru said, shivering at the prospect of punishment. All of you pay attention, I've assigned you in a rank mission since the land of the waves, and I want you, Sakura, and Shikamaru to go after Sasuke, he said. What happened to him? Naruto inquired. He's gone after Gaia and her siblings, and I need you three to find him before he gets too far in. He's right, Naruto-kun, I'm sensing something odd with Gaia's seal, and we need to stop it or the seal will break and release Shukaku-chan, Kurama said. Then what about us? Haku asked, as Fu pondered the same question. I'll need you two to assist the others in guiding the civilians to safety while we Junins and Anbu fight them off, Kakashi said. In that case, Shadow Clone Jutsu. Naruto formed his signature hand sign and over a hundred of his clones stood nearby, okay guys, half of you will guide the civilians to safety and the other will run those sand and sound ninjas out of town or clear. Sir, yes sir. The clones sped away, followed by Haku and Fu. Please be careful, Naruto-kun. Fu exclaimed before sprouting insect wings and flying away. Naruto returned his gaze to the others and nodded, Okay guys, let's go, we don't have much time. Kakashi summoned Pakun to lead the way and then took off, Sakura and Shikamaru trailing behind. Do you think they'll be okay? Guy asked, taking the Goken stance and facing the sound ninjas. I wouldn't worry about them, especially since Naruto is with them. Everything will be fine, Kakashi replied as he raised his headband to reveal his Sharingan. As expected of my eternal rival, let's unleash the power of our youth!" exclaimed Guy, making Kakashi sweat drop. Meanwhile, Hiruzen was confronted by his former student, who was smiling evilly at him. I never thought I'd fight you again, Serutobi sensei Orochimaru said. So you planned all of this to kill me, my dear former student? Hiruzen asked. That's correct and I intend to completely destroy the Hidden Leaf Village. Orochimaru, I've regretted letting you go back then, but this time I intend to make amends, Hiruzen grabbed his robes and removed them, revealing him in battle gear. Besides, a certain ninja would never let your plan succeed, Hiruzen said. Fighting me is pointless. I'll soon have the perfect body and achieve immortality. Then I'd better make you work for it on the academy's campus. Iruka was protecting the kids from the sound ninjas who were currently invading the academy in a field. Konohamaru, get Moegi, Udon, and the other kids out of here. It's too dangerous. Iruka yelled, clutching a kanai in a reverse grip. What better way to cripple a ninja village than to destroy the younger generation? Kill them. At the command of a sand ninja, the rest were about to rush in when someone jumped in between them, whom Aruka, Konohamaru, Moegi, and Udon recognized instantly. I can't let you do that, I'm the role model, a familiar voice said. Naruto, Naruto ni! exclaimed Aruka and the kids simultaneously. What are you doing here, a kid? One of the ninjas demanded. Isn't it obvious that I'm here to protect the kids and send you guys packing? Said C. Naruto, quirking his brow as if to ask, are you stupid? But Naruto, these are chunin level ninja. There's no way you'll be able to beat them all, Iruka expressed concern. Oh ye of little faith, surely you haven't forgotten that I've got an ace up my sleeve, C. Naruto raised his hand to reveal the bracelet, causing Iruka to realize what he's talking about. 
C. Naruto then channeled Chakra into the bracelet and exclaimed, Henshin. Henshin. There was a bright light before it faded to reveal C. Naruto in his mask form as Kamen Rider Kabuto, then he took out the Kanai gun, held it in axe mode, and pointed it at them. Attack me. Despite being a bit slower than them, C. Naruto swung the axe at one of them only to miss and get hit with a kanai that created spark upon contact, but he quickly retaliated with a backhand that knocked one back and floated up with a shoulder charge. He twirled the weapon and held it in gun mode before blasting a few back, but they could still fight. Ni Chan, please be cautious! exclaimed Konohamaru. Look, even the kids are worried about you. Maybe if you take off some of that armor, you'll be able to beat us," one of the sound ninjas mocked, wishing they could see the blonde smirk behind the mask. You make a good point, I think I'll do that. Cast off. C. Naruto flipped the horn on the belt buckle to the other side as the extra armor flew off and hit some of the ninjas, revealing a much sleeker form. Change Beetle cast off. C. Naruto activated Kanai mode and dashed towards them at a faster pace. Iruka watched as the blonde now fought with equal footing against the invaders, knocking a few off their feet with a low sweep kick and sending another reeling in pain from a high kick, while another tried to attack from behind but was knocked back with a spinning kick. It's time for me to wrap this up, clock up. C. Naruto slid his belt sideways. Current time. From everyone's perspective, the sound ninjas had seemingly vanished, and the next thing they knew, they were being pummeled from all directions, barely giving them a chance to defend. Wow! That's really fast! exclaimed Moegi. Yes, faster than the fourth when he uses his Hiroshin, Aruka marveled. That bracelet truly is a powerful weapon, I truly pity anyone who goes up against Naruto now. End of time. C. Naruto appeared in front of them and began pressing the buttons on the belt buckle before flipping the horn once more. One, two, three. Kick Rider. Kick Rider. C. Naruto leapt into the air as white lightning flashed from his belt buckle to his horn, then to his right leg, which he used to perform a flying sidekick, causing an explosion and severely injuring the sound ninjas when he made contact. As he walked out of the crater created by the rider kick, Konohamaru ran towards Naruto. That was really cool, Ni-chan. You moved so quickly that they couldn't even blink. There is no time, Konohamaru, Aruka said. Aruka-sensei is correct, we need to get the kids to safety, see Naruto said as he flipped the horn once more. Put on. C. Naruto and the others ran into the academy to assist the other teachers as the extra pieces of armor flew back and reattached themselves, reverting to his masked form. On the roads. How come Intel didn't inform us that Zabuza Momochi has joined the Hidden Leaf? Yelled a sand ninja as he watched Zabuza slash one of them in half with his Kabikirobocho. You punks have chosen the wrong village to invade, especially since I now live here yelled Zabuza, slinging his Zanbatu over his shoulder and glaring at them. He was about to engage them when he felt someone land next to him and turned to see a familiar blonde-haired figure. Hey, kid, what brings you here? The boss made us to protect and clean up the trash. I saw you fighting these guys and assumed you used a tag partner, C. Naruto explained. All I can say is you're welcome to join in. There's a lot of these punks to go around, Zabuza smirked under his mask. C. Naruto gave him a foxy grin and stood next to him. Just let me get my big friend, the Final Fantasy. There was a bright glow that faded to reveal Naruto holding the fusion sword, making the sand ninjas wary of him. Get the kid, he should be easier to kill. One of them yelled as the others charged at C. Naruto. The blonde simply smirked and charged back at them, hacking and slashing at them before Zabuza joined in the fight. C. Naruto attempted a downward slash on a sand ninja, but it was blocked, and the sword became embedded in the ground, which he couldn't pull out hard enough. 
The ninja seized the opportunity and drew a kanai to stab him in the back. Kid, watch your back! Yelled Zabuza as he fought the other ninjas. You're a dead brat now. When C. Naruto realized he wouldn't be able to pull out the sword in time to defend himself even if he used chakra on his arms, he reached above the hilt and ejected a side blade, then quickly turned around and slashed the ninja across the chest, causing blood to spill out, and kicked him away. When C. Naruto turned around and saw Zabuza surrounded by sand ninjas, he kicked the embedded blade that had loosened as a result of ejecting the side blade into the air and jumped after it. He caught the blade in midair and slotted the side blade back into it before landing in the middle of the group with his back to Zabuza. What are you waiting for? Let's attack them all at once! exclaimed one of them. If you could see us, hidden mist jutsu. Zabuza raised one arm with a half ram hand sign and the other with the same hand sign at his chest, and a thick mist covered the area. Sand ninjas frantically look around for the swordsman and the boy, then they hear rapid footsteps, metal clanging, agonizing screams, and bodies falling to the ground. The mist lifted to reveal the sand ninjas' dead bodies, with C. Naruto and Zabuza standing nearby with blood on their clothes and blades. You know you're going to end up on the bingo book after this, Zabuza predicted. Yeah. But when I think of the stories I'll get to tell my kids after I retire, it doesn't seem so bad, C. Naruto shrugged, turning to look behind him. Oh look, more assholes who want us dead. By the way, would you like to try the fusion sword? That is if you want to try out my kabikirabocho, Zabuza smirked as he saw Naruto hold out the blade to him. Deal. With smirks on their faces, Naruto and Zabuza turned around to confront the new group. Meanwhile, Pakun was leading Naruto and the others through the forest when they noticed him sniffing around. What is it? Sakura inquired. We've got two squads following us, and according to their sense, they're nine ninjas, Pakun explained. Oh man, we don't have time for this, what a drag, Shikamaru exclaimed. Is there anything that won't be a drag for this boy? Karama asked, her brow furrowed. I'll let you know when I find out, Naruto said. And, based on the sense, they must be Orochimaru's men, and they are most likely Junin level. Normally, I'd have said we'd set an ambush, but not only would we be exhausted, but we could be killed if they figured out we'd planned it, Shikamaru explained. Then what other options do we have? Naruto inquired. Just one, a diversion that only appears to be an ambush, so one of us will have to stay behind and slow them down. But the one who stays behind will probably die. Hearing this caused the group to pause, so the question is who's going to do it? The dog is needed to locate Sasuke, in that case. Naruto was about to volunteer when he was cut off, it's going to have to be me. But Shikamaru, why are you doing this? It's too dangerous. Sakura objected. It's better than all of us being taken down, plus I'm the best guy for the job with my shadow possession jutsu, which was designed for delaying tactics, so you better get a move on, Shikamaru said. I can understand your plan, but it won't hurt to have an ace in the hole, Naruto said as he placed a hand on Nara's shoulder and the bracelet glowed brightly. Later on, the sound ninjas tracked the footprints left by Naruto and the others. They were about to continue when they realized they couldn't move their bodies. Sorry about that, normally I don't like to get involved in these kinds of things, but I'm willing to make an exception this time because I don't want you guys to go after my friends, they turned to see Shikamaru standing behind them, his hands crossed behind his back, his shadow overlapping theirs. I can't believe we got caught by a kid, one of the sound ninjas exclaimed. This has to be the shadow paralysis jutsu that we've heard about, another person speculated. You guys must be behind this since we don't go by that name anymore, the true name is shadow possession jutsu, said Shikamaru, he feeling his chakra waning as his shadow distorted from time to time since he hadn't fully recovered from the battle against Tamari, he studied his enemies carefully before frowning a bit, how come there's only eight? 
Pakun said that there's nine unless one of them lagged behind so as to protect them against an ambush, in that case. Shikamaru reached into his pouch and hurled a handful of shuriken at the group, only to have them deflected by some kanai. He quickly traced them to a nearby tree and attempted to stretch a shadow towards it, but it stopped halfway. Damn. I don't have enough chakra to cast another shadow, Shikamaru reflected. Looks like you've reached your limit, the sound ninja said as he and the others felt themselves able to move and saw the shadow retreat to Shikamaru. Hey, you can come out now, and when you do, cut off his head. Shikamaru's arm twitched, and there was a scream followed by a body landing, but the head was missing. I guess it was his head that was cut off, Shikamaru, who was still shaking from his first kill, said as the group tried to attack but found themselves unable to move. What's going on? Why can't we move when he's not using his shadow? They wondered, when they noticed a glint in the sunlight, but wires. Shikamaru gave them a lazy smile and reached his hand out from behind him, revealing that he was wearing a glove with metal tips and thin wire threads running through it, with the majority of the wire held in a large spool at the back of his waist. Its wires are super strong, making it ideal for immobilizing enemies, but it can also be used for attacking and defending, according to Naruto. As you can see, I set up a trap before you arrived in case something like this happened, and I was correct, then he noticed the sound ninjas struggling with the wires. I advise you to stop struggling or the threads will only get tighter and you might lose something, he said. He turned when he heard someone land next to him and saw it was his sensei Asuma. I see you've got things under control, Asuma commented. And I have a troublesome blonde to thank for it. I wonder if he'll let me keep it because it makes things easier for me, Shikamaru said, turning to face Naruto and the others. You guys better not die on me, Shikamaru said. On a different road. A woman with her back to a building wall, her daughter in her arms, looks fearfully at a group of sound ninjas approaching her with lust in their eyes. Leave us alone, we didn't hurt you, the woman yelled as her daughter hid her face in her mother's kimono. Hee hee ha. Looks like someone who can give us a good time, one of the sound ninjas said as he reached out to grab the women. I don't think so, a voice said. The man then felt someone grab his arm and scream in pain as it was twisted so tightly that it broke, and then he was punched in the face, and everyone turned to see a boy with blonde hair whom the woman recognized as the girl peeped out. Oni-chan, what is your name? Curious, the girl inquired. I'm just your friendly neighborhood ninja here to save the day, don't worry about these guys, I'll take care of them, especially him, see Naruto said before glaring at the man with the broken arm. I think I'll need a tag team partner for this, see Naruto bit his thumb hard enough to draw blood before performing a series of hand signs and slamming a palm on the ground, jutsu summoning. There was a puff of smoke before it cleared to reveal a small red bipedal dragon with blue eyes, a spiky mouth, and a V-shaped forehead, wearing green headphones around its ears and holding a mic long enough to act as a staff. What kind of call is that? One of the sound ninjas yelled, and the dragon smiled toothily at them. Do you want to know? I'm sure you're curious. That would be my name. Give them your introduction. See Naruto exclaimed. Shoutman here. The man who will one day be king. You'd better carve it into your hearts so you don't forget. Declared the dragon. Let's bring them down. Travel to the west. Naruto summoned the golden staff and took a ready stance next to Shoutman. Let's get started. Rock on, rocker. Some of the sound ninjas hurled kanais at Shoutman, but Naruto jumped forward and spun the staff, deflecting all of them. Soul Crusher, get out of the way, Naruto. Shoutman screamed into his microphone, causing a blast of red energy to be released, forcing a few of them to leap into the air, only for Naruto to leap after them. Naruto splat. Naruto made the staff lengthen before swinging around and slamming them to the ground, creating a crater, then landed next to Shoutman, 
who held out a hand and fire gathered around it to form an eighth note. Rock Soul, hit a home run. Shoutman tossed the fireball into the air, and Naruto swung at it like a baseball, increasing its speed towards the fallen sound ninjas, resulting in a fiery explosion. Dude, with that kind of swing, I might be the next Babe Ruth, see Naruto joked before turning to the woman and the girl and asking, are you okay? Yes, but why are you assisting us? Asked the woman, who was one of those who saw him as a demon out to destroy them. If I can't protect the people of this village, I have no right to even consider myself a candidate for Hokage, see Naruto joked. The same can be said for me if I want to be the next Digimon King, Shoutman joked. Thank you for assisting us, Ni Chan, the girl said, holding out her hand to see Naruto, who took it and shook it with a smile, and the woman felt ashamed for being so biased, then they heard an explosion and turned to see giant snakes with red cloth around their necks rampaging through the village. Shoutman, get those two to safety so I can see if I can make snake wallets out of them. Got it, Naruto. Shoutman grabbed them and flew away as see Naruto pole vaulted to a roof, bit his thumb, and repeated the hand signs before slamming a palm on the ground. Summoning Jutsu A puff of smoke cleared, revealing Naruto standing on the head of a large orange Tyrannosaurus Rex with spikes on its arms, shoulders, and jaws with blue tips. It has blue stripes on its body and is dressed in red training bracers and a brown helmet with three horns and multiple red striped spikes. What's up, Naruto? inquired the summon. Yo Geo Greymon, we've got a serpentine pest invading the village, and I could use some help from my favorite orange partner, see Naruto explained. Then you've got the right Digimon for the job. Geo Greymon charged at one of the serpents and slashed with his claws before turning around to slam his tail at the snake's neck powerfully enough to break it. Awesome Geo Greymon, but keep your guard up because one of its friends is coming over here exclaimed C. Naruto as they turned around to see one of the snakes slithering towards them. I got this, horn impulse. Geo Greymon lowered his head and charged forward, piercing the snake's belly with his horns, then raised his head to fling the snake high into the air and turned with his mouth open, spouting flames powerful enough to burn the snakes to ashes. The snakes realized the new summon posed a threat and were about to attack when they heard a voice call out, summon jutsu, bringing down the house. Then, from above, a large toad with two katanas appeared and landed on one of the snakes, crushing it. Naruto then noticed someone riding on it, and it was none other than Jiraiya. Never fear, my fellow leaf ninjas, Jiraiya the toad sage has arrived. Jiraiya exclaimed while striking a kabuki pose. Pervy Sage, it's about time you showed up, I'm almost out of Chakra and Gigi is fighting Snakey in the battle arena. Exclaimed C. Naruto. I see, then let's take care of the summons before we go help the old man, Jiraiya said, to which C. Naruto nodded before turning to face the remaining snakes. Located in the market district. Several sand ninjas were dashing through the streets until they came to a halt when they noticed a boy with blonde hair and whisker marks on his cheeks standing in the middle of the road, arms crossed and glaring at them. What is a kid like you doing here, you want to die or something? Sneered one of the sand ninjas. Do you think you can walk into our village and act like you own it? Here's a news flash for you. We don't take kindly to rude guests, see Naruto said. And what are you going to do about it? One of the ninjas mocked. Simple, kick you out of town, lock and load. Then a bright glow faded to reveal Naruto holding a machine gun. You punks better take me seriously or I'll turn you into Swiss cheese, he said. Naruto pulled the trigger and fired a round of bullets at them. Some of the sand ninjas were hit but the more experienced sand ninjas were able to avoid it thanks to their instincts and retaliated by throwing shurikens at the blonde. Naruto dove to the ground and landed on his stomach, continuing to fire and landing a headshot on one of them. 
He noticed a shadow approaching him and rolled to his back, switching to his flamethrower and shooting a stream of fire at the ninja who had crept up behind him. Naruto stood up and ran behind some stacked wooden crates for cover, then began charging the gun as yellow energy gathered at the muzzle. Then he jumped out and shot a massive ball of fire at them, but they dodged it and quickly moved in to attack. Naruto was forced to be defensive as he avoided the sand ninja's attacks. You're not so tough now, are you? Mocked one of the ninjas. Damn, I need to take these guys out all at once, Naruto thought, then switched back to rapid fire and charged again, then kicked a sand ninja in the face and jumped away. He shot a pod in midair that was heading towards the sand ninjas, and Naruto quickly hid in an alley right as the pod began spinning and firing rounds in all directions, killing the ninjas before they could react. Naruto grimaced as he peered out the alley to see the dead bodies, then saw the giant toad and Geo Greymon attacking the snakes, the others must be just as busy as I am, I'd better pick up the pace and do my job, he said as he took off in search of more sand and sound ninjas to take down. Despite this, the clones all agreed, we're doing our best out here, so you'd better do the same, boss. Meanwhile, Naruto, Sakura, and Pakun are sprinting towards Sasuke. Sasuke, you'd better hold on, Gaia isn't someone you could handle even with the Sharingan, Naruto thought. Naruto-sama, you may need to use some of the weapons to fight Shukaku, Shinami said. Naruto-kun, hurry. I can feel Shukaku's chakra leaking out. Worried Karama. I got Ku-chan, I'll hurry. Thought Naruto as he accelerated his pace. Damn, what the hell is she? Thought Sasuke as he stared at Gaia, who had half of her body covered in sand and it had covered her hand in the shape of a claw, and she was staring at him as if he were a piece of meat. Sasuke had been pursuing the sand siblings since they fled the battle arena. Tamari remained behind to fight him but was defeated when he used Ichidori as a feint, causing her to throw some, and replaced himself with a log containing an exploding note, knocking her away before continuing on his way. Tamari had caught up with Konkuru and Gaia by the time he arrived, and it was Konkuru's turn to buy them. However, Shino arrived to fight Konkuru, allowing Sasuke to continue his pursuit. But it was when he caught up with Gaia that she awoke and violently knocked Tamari away, and the right half of her body began to change. After that, she began attacking with the ferocity of an animal. Sasuke attempted to fight back, but his efforts were futile, and the Sharingan didn't help matters. He wanted to use the Chidori but was hesitant because Kakashi had warned him that he could only use it three times per day and that the third time would be half as effective and the cursed seal would take over. But when Gaia mocked him by saying that his reason for being was pathetic, it enraged Sasuke enough to use the Chidori again to strike Gaia, but it was insufficient to harm her, and the cursed seal immediately activated and covered his body, paralyzing it in pain. Now die, Sasuke Uchiha, and let mother feast on your blood to prove my existence. Gaia charged at Sasuke, her sand claw extended to impale him. Damn. This can't be the end for me. I can't die until I've killed Itachi and avenged my clan. Thought Sasuke as he watched the claw slowly approach him when he heard a familiar voice. Flying kick. A foot slammed into Gaia's face, sending her flying back, and then a boy, Naruto Uzumaki, landed in front of him. Sorry for the delay, Sasuke. We had to deal with stalkers and then take a detour before we finally caught up with you, Naruto said with a sly grin. HMPH, better late than never, Dobi, Sasuke grumbled as the cursed seal pulsed through his body, causing Naruto to frown slightly. I thought Gigi said the seal was dealt with? Naruto wondered. My guess is that Sasuke pushed his body too far for the cursed seal to take over, Shinami speculated. We can discuss that later. Right now, we need to focus on Gaia and Shukaku. Said Kurama, and Naruto nodded in agreement before turning to face the partially transformed Gaia and speaking to Sakura. 
I need you to get Sasuke out of here, Sakura-chan. But Naruto, even with the bracelet, it's too dangerous for you to face her alone, Sakura protested, worried about him. Don't forget that our mission was to bring Sasuke back, and that is our number one priority, besides I think I've got her full attention, Naruto said, sadistically looking at Gaia. I've been waiting all this time, Naruto Uzumaki, to fight to prove my existence and have mother feast on your blood. Exclaimed Gaia. Sakura, hurry. Okay, Naruto-kun, just please come back alive, Sakura said as Naruto turned and smiled gently at her. I promise, Sakura said as she went to carry Sasuke away, and Naruto turned around to face Gaia. I believe we should introduce ourselves before we battle, as I'm sure it will be an unforgettable one, Naruto said. I am Gaia of the Sand, daughter of the fourth K's Cage and Shukaku's Jinchuriki, Gaia explained. And I am Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, son of the fourth Hokage and Kashina Uzumaki, and the Jinchuriki of Kurama, Naruto said. Tamari, who was nearby, was taken aback when he learned who Naruto truly was, He's the son of the Yellow Flash and a Jinchuriki? Then why isn't he bloodthirsty like Gaia? Begin with music from Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Rage awakened the origin. Naruto made some hand gestures and launched the Jutsu Fire Style Grand Fireball. A large ball of fire raced towards Gaia, who had her sand claw expand enough to form a shield around her to block the attack. I guess fire jutsu is out because it won't do anything. You can't use water jutsu either because there's no water nearby, Chinami explained. Which only leaves you with wind and lightning jutsus to use against him, Naruto-kun, keep an eye on her because she's transforming again. Said Kurama. Naruto-kun, we have to stop her before she completes her transformation, Naruto said as the sand spread over Gaia's body exposing only her legs and forming a tail. So it's a race against time, these things are never easy, Naruto jumped towards Gaia and formed a hand sign, Shadow Clone Jutsu. Several clones appeared and charged in. Sandstorm devastation in wind style. Gaia took a deep breath, and several mouths appeared on her body to do the same, before releasing a powerful gust mixed with sand. The blast was powerful enough to send Naruto and his clones flying back, dispelling them as well, while Naruto crashed into a tree trunk. Fighting back the pain, Naruto performed some hand signs and took a deep breath, wind style, great breakthrough. Before opening his mouth and releasing his own power gust to push back the sandstorm until they both dissipated. Right, Uzumaki, fight me and make me feel alive. Sand Shuriken. Gaia crossed her arms. Naruto quickly placed a hand on the hilt of Mumi no Tamanu, Secret Arts, Quick Draw, and lashed out, releasing sand projectiles. He drew out the blade in a flash as the sand projectiles were slashed, then sped through some hand signs again, lightning style, lightning bolt. Then he held out his palm to Gaia, shooting arcs of electricity from it. Naruto teleported away and reappeared on the trunk of a tree with chakra channeled to his feet to latch onto it, then he saw many sand tendrils racing towards from different directions. Naruto-kun, if the sand catches you, it's all over. Yelled Kurama. I know. Typhoon dance is a wind-style dance. Naruto jumped off and spun in the air, and the wind gathered and swirled around him, keeping the sand away from him. I'm surprised he can defend himself against Gaia's attacks in that form, but it's pointless if he can't break through her sand defense, Tamari observed from a safe distance. Girls, I'm open to suggestions. I can't get in close because the sand will crush me, and attacking from a distance has no effect at all. So far, I've only used wind jutsus to counter Gaia's sand attacks. Naruto reflected as he continued to deflect the sand tendrils with a Gale Claw Jutsu. Despite having only one tail, Shukaku-chan is known for using sand to defend against any kind of Jutsu, hence the name Absolute Defense. 
her weaknesses are water jutsus because it will soak her sand and slow its movement, and lightning jutsus because they can pierce through her sand shields, Kurama explained. But there isn't any water nearby for me to use, and I haven't asked Kakashi Ni for lightning jutsus because I only know one that I created apart from the others, and it won't be as effective. Naruto-sama, I just went through the archives and found a weapon that can help you against Gaia, and I'm sending the information to you right now, Chinami said as she ran out of the library Naruto had built for her to store the bracelet's knowledge. Naruto felt the information flow into his mind before placing his hand on the bracelet and channeling while shouting, Buso Renkin. Then there was a flash of light before it faded to reveal Naruto holding a small and sleek lance with a dragon motif, teeth-like patterns, and hexagons. Although it closely resembles that of a sword, Naruto felt that it could be wielded with one hand, unlike normal lances, which are held with two hands. How is that overgrown toothpick going to help you? Yelled Gaia as she launched another barrage of sand shuriken at the blonde. Naruto held out the lance and twirled it like a propeller, deflecting all of them before holding it with both hands and aiming it at partially transformed Jinchuriki. Sunshine Slasher The tips and sides, as well as the end of the lance, opened up to release yellow energy, which quickly launched Naruto forwards. Gaia performed the Sand Devastation Jutsu again to blow him back, but he simply pierced through it and kept on approaching. Tendrils of sand shot out of Gaia's sand body and wrapped around Naruto's limbs, then it proceeded to squeeze him tightly. The lance opened up and stretched out with the tip heading towards Gaia, forcing her to throw him away just as the tip pierced her sand armor and almost reached her real body, Naruto flipped in midair and landed safely on a tree branch using the lance's energy propulsion. Naruto-sama, channel your lightning chakra into the lance, it will increase its power, Chinami said, and Naruto did so, and yellow lightning could be seen coursing through the lance. Naruto began swinging the lance repeatedly, releasing lightning energy waves at Gaia, who used her arms to block them, but she could feel her body go numb with each hit. This is my opportunity, Shadow Clone Jutsu. The clones appeared and dashed towards Gaia while channeling lightning chakra to various parts of their bodies. Gaia was able to destroy the first clones that came to her, but she was struck by two clones that approached from below and was soon followed by the rest, with the sand being unstable due to the electricity. Can you believe he's actually putting pressure on Gaia? Tamari pondered. Uzumaki, die. Gaia lashed out with her claw stretching it towards Naruto, who had stabbed the lance into it and was attempting to hold it back but was being pushed back. This is it, Sunlight Slasher, Full Blast Lightning Mode. The lance released far more energy than before and rocketed towards Gaia while splitting the sand claw. Just as he got close, he drew back at the last second and slammed a powerful punch infused with lightning, sending her crashing to the ground. He then heard Gaia scream aloud. My existence will not be forgotten. I'm not going to lose to someone like you. Naruto-kun, you need to get out of there right now. Yelled Kurama, and Naruto quickly used the lance to propel himself away just as a cloud of smoke appeared, turning to see a huge silhouette behind the smoke, which cleared to reveal a giant raccoon completely made of sand with a long tail behind it. Oh no! She's released its full form, it's not me for being here, Tamari thought before leaping away. If she goes big, I'll go big, summoning Jutsu. Naruto made the lance vanish before making some hand gestures and slamming his right palm on the ground, there was a puff of smoke before it faded to reveal Naruto standing on a giant toad with a scar across its left eye, wearing a purple vest with a katana strapped to its side. It's you, kid. Why have you summoned me here? Inquired the toad. Gamabunta, I summoned you here because I need your assistance against the Shukaku, Naruto said, motioning to the biju. You must be in a bind. I'll assist, but next time we'll trade a cup of sake to seal the deal. Perhaps when I reach the legal age, I'll be glad to do so. Then you've struck a deal. 
Then Gamabunta drew his katana from its sheath while holding it in reverse and held it by his side before leaping at the sand raccoon. Shukaku lashed out a claw to attack the toad, but Gamabunta dodged at the last second and swung his sword, take this, toad blade cut. Darn, his body was so heavy that I couldn't complete the cut, I'd better finish the battle. The blade sank into the biju's arm, but he was forced to let go just as the arm was cut off and fell apart, with the sword stabbing into the ground with enough force to cause a minor quake. Then they noticed the sand shifting on the Shukaku's forehead and saw Gaia emerge from it, sneering at them. To push me to revealing this form, you truly are interesting Naruto Uzumaki. I'll now demonstrate the power of the sand spirit. Gaia formed a hand sign and called out, Sleep Possum Jutsu, before slumping over and falling asleep. This is bad, Gamabunta said, tensing. What exactly do you mean? Inquired Naruto. From what I've heard, those who are the Jinchuriki for the Ichibi suffer from insomnia as they would have their psyche slowly eaten by it until they lose sight of who they are should they ever fall asleep. The Shukaku will be unleashed now that she has set that jutsu in motion, they saw the Shukaku's eyes focus in before it raised its head to the sky and screamed. Oh, I'm finally out. Now I'm free to crush whatever I want. Is that Shukaku? Inquired Naruto, quirking his brow. That's not Shukaku-chan. I don't recognize the voice. It's as if he's a different person, Kurama observed as she went through his senses. Ku-chan. I have an idea and I'll need your help, Naruto said, and they agreed to the idea. We'll need to get close to her for it to work, Chinami explained. Kid, hold on, I'm about to jump. Gamabunta crouched as Naruto applied chakra to his feet to latch on, said Naruto. Shukaku's stomach bulged as it inhaled air, then it raised its claw and slammed into it, shouting, wind style, air bullet. Gamabunta jumped into the air and quickly went through some hand signs, water style, liquid bullet. Gamabunta landed behind the biju and leapt into the air again, Shukaku turned around and shot three consecutive air bullets while Gamabunta shot two liquid bullets back, but the third air was still inbound. Gamabunta. Turn your head quickly towards the incoming attack. Despite his reservations, Gamabunta agreed, and Naruto took a stance as a red rune with Sita characters surrounded him and flames appeared on his hands, Ninpo, Art of the Inferno. Then he put them together and thrust forwards as he shot a giant fireball that clashed with the air bullet resulting in an explosion. Good job, kid. Now all we have to do is wake that kid up so that we can release that jutsu. Got it. Said Naruto. Then Shukaku shot an air bullet, but Gamabunta dodged in midair and shot a liquid bullet, which Shukaku jumped back to avoid, resulting in a splash of water. Then Gamabunta landed in front of Shukaku and grabbed him by the shoulders, forcing Naruto to jump back. Gamabunta, I can't get close if you don't keep a firm grip on him. Yelled Naruto. Sorry, kid but my body lacks the claws and fangs required for that purpose. Gamabunta said in midair. So, what should we do? I propose that you summon one of the Digimon who has what we require. Alright, Gamabunta, I'll catch you later. Good luck, and don't die on me before we get that cup of sake. Naruto leapt into the air as Gamabunda vanished in a puff of smoke with his blade and began making hand signs as he descended to the ground. What's the problem? Is it true that the little toad bolted? Yelled Shukaku. On the contrary, I'm filling in for him with someone who can put you in your place. Jutsu summoning. There was a puff of smoke and it faded to reveal a giant saber-toothed lion with yellow fur and red markings on its body, mane, and tail, Ku-chan said. No problem, Naruto-kun. Now let us stop Shukaku-chan. Kurama explained. Yo Naruto, it appears you require assistance, the summoned Digimon said. 
You're right about Saber Liamon. I need you to restrain Shukaku so I can stop him, Naruto said. I got the gist of it, Naruto, here we go. Saber Liamon crouched low before dash towards Ichibi. Shukaku shot several air bullets but Saber Liamon darted left and right to avoid the attacks before pouncing at the sand raccoon. Shukaku avoided the claw and swung its tail which was evaded when Saber Liamon dashed backwards before leaping into the air to evade an air bullet. Naruto-kun, you must hurry, Shukaku's power is only growing. Karama explained. Let's take it up a notch, Saber Liamon. Yelled Naruto. You got it, Naruto. Hold on tight. Yelled Saber Liamon. Then he took off faster than before and was soon running in circles around the Shukaku until all that could be seen were after images. Every time the sand raccoon launched an air bullet it would completely miss him. Then Saber Liamon came in from behind and yelled, Howling Crusher. No more air bullets for you, but I have to make sure you don't cause any more problems, Twin Fang. The hairs on Saber Liamon's mane hardened before he dashed forward and tackled Shukaku. The biju tried to retaliate by swinging its tail but its body couldn't move. What the hell, why can't I move? I want to destroy even more things. Yelled Shukaku. Saber Liamon's twin fang paralyzes his enemies upon contact, which is why you can't move, Naruto explained before turning to Saber Liamon. Saber Liamon jumped forward and grabbed Shukaku, his claws digging into his skin. It's all up to you now, Naruto. Go for it. Saber Liamon said, then Naruto jumped off and landed on Shukaku's head, then ran up to Gaia and placed his middle and index fingers on her forehead. Ku-chan, do it right now. Kurama channeled her chakra through the hand, and Naruto closed his eyes to find himself standing in a desert with a night sky and a full moon out. I guess this is Gaia's mindscape, I'd better find Gaia in the real Shukaku before anything else happens, he was about to take off when he heard someone crying, Naruto trailed the source to a boulder and looked behind to see a little girl with red hair. My name is Gaia, and I was crying because my mommy was scaring me, and she wasn't like that before, the girl said, surprised. I see, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, and could you please tell me where your mother is? Then Gaia pointed in a direction, and Naruto turned to see a pyramid in the distance. She's in there with someone else, but she won't let me get close to her. I understand, I'm going over there to find out what going so you stay here where it's safe okay? With a nod of approval from the redhead, Naruto dashed off towards the pyramid. Naruto heard a masculine voice echo throughout the pyramid as he approached the main chamber. Where is that little brat? He wondered. I was about to destroy what was left of her psyche in order to take over her body when she ran off, Naruto exclaimed as he entered the chamber and came face to face with a man of tan complexion, bald hair, wearing some sort of priest clothes, and bearing black tattoos across his face. I am Naruto Uzumaki, now the question is who you are and what you are doing in Gaia's mindscape? Said Naruto, staring at the man. I am Kazar the Mad Priest. I used to be the Jinchuriki of the Shukaku until they sealed it into a tea kettle but they were unaware that my spirit was sealed as well. Ever since I was sealed into this girl, I've been influencing her by pretending to be her mother while slowly eating away at her psyche until I eventually take control of her body and the power of the Shukaku, the man said, his face twisted. So you're the reason Gaia has been so unstable. I'm not going to let you control Gaia or Shukaku any longer. Naruto said as he drew Tsukiyotoshi from its sheath. I've come too far to be held back by a jerk like you. Kazar yelled as he drew his scimitar and took a stance. They both dashed towards each other and clashed blades with equal speed and skill. Despite Tsukiyotoshi being a heavy blade, Naruto was able to use it to counter Kazar's seemingly wild strikes, and Kazar was no slouch either as he could wield the scimitar with one hand despite it being a two-handed sword. 
Naruto slid on the ground with his blade forward to slash Kazars but the mad priest jumped into the air and fell as he attempted to cleave Naruto in half. The blonde rolled to the side leaving the sword to hit the ground then he came back with slash and was blocked by Kazars sword receiving a punch in return. Damn it. This guy's tough and nuts, Naruto exclaimed as he leapt away from Kazar, a hand on his chest to stop the bleeding and the broken Muramasa in the other. When I'm done with you, I'm going to destroy that Gaia and finally gain the Biju's power to destroy everything. Kazar burst out laughing. And I told you I wouldn't let you do this. You don't belong here, so I'm kicking you out. Yelled Naruto as he sheathed the shattered Tsukiyotoshi and drew Mumi no Tamanu before charging the insane priest with fire in his eyes. The mad priest launched a one-handed slash, but Naruto blocked the sword to the side and jabbed the butt end of the Muramasa into his gut, making him stumble backwards. Naruto kept up the offense as he grabbed Kazar's head with his free hand and drove it into his knee, then flipped over him and slashed his back as blood spurted out. Damn you brat, why aren't you dead yet? Yelled Kazar as he charged at Naruto in a rage. Naruto then stood with his legs apart and crouched slightly while holding the Mumi no Tamanu in front of him. Then he took a step forward with the raised and brought it down right as Kazar tried to block the attack, but he sliced through the blade and across his chest. Running slash three times. Naruto launched him into the air with an uppercut, then leapt after him and began slashing him while dashing left and right in midair, he positioned himself over Kazar, stabbed the blade through him, and landed below. It's all over you crazy priest, now get out of here, you have an appointment with the Shinigami, Naruto said as he watched Kazar fade away, screaming in agony, and noticed someone peeking out from the passageway, crying. Who was that man, and what happened to mommy? Asked the terrified girl, Naruto walked over and placed a hand over her shoulder before kneeling. The truth is that man pretended to be your mother and tricked you into hurting those people, but you won't have to worry about him anymore because I've sent him away for good, Naruto said as he saw Gaia cry again. It's because he told me I didn't need anyone, not even my brother and sister, and they don't want to come near me again, and I'm so lonely without anyone to be my friend, she says. If that's the case, I can solve it by being your friend, Naruto explained. Gaia looked at him, surprised and hopeful. Are you certain? Certainly, and I know there's someone else who wants to be your friend, but that man was keeping you from seeing her. Now let's go and meet her, Naruto held out a hand to Gaia, and as she took it, she transformed into her older form, and they continued deeper into the pyramid until they came to a double door that was locked with thick chains. Gaia Chan, stand back so that I can open it, Naruto said. Gaia took a step back and watched as Naruto placed a hand on the hilt of Mumi no Tamanu, then there was a flicker of movement, then the chains broke in pieces when Naruto sheathed the blade with a click. They pushed open the gate and looked inside to see a girl sitting with her knees brought up to her stomach and her head down, but she could see two small perky ears on top of brown hair. W who exactly are you? The girl inquired shyly. Ku Chan was correct, she's quite shy. I'm sure she'd get along with Hanada, Naruto reasoned. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, and this is Gaia. We came here to free you after taking care of Kazar. You mean that man is gone? Asked Shukaku, receiving nods of agreement from both before smiling, thank you, and my name is Shukaku. It's nice to meet you Shukaku-chan. I hope we can be friends, Gaia smiled, and the shy raccoon returned the smile. All's well that ends well, I'll see you outside, Naruto said as he faded out of Gaia's mindscape. When Naruto opened his eyes, he saw that he was still on the Shukaku, Gaia was awake and looked around confusedly until she saw Naruto and smiled happily, and the sand began to crumble, prompting Naruto to run to grab Gaia in a bridal carry and jump off to land on Saberliamon's head. Whatever you did, Naruto, it worked, I'm heading back so I'll catch you later, Saber Leomon said after lowering his head for them to get off before disappearing in a puff of smoke, 
and Naruto then heard Kurama call out to him from his mindscape. Are you okay, Naruto-kun? Kurama inquired, concerned. I'm fine, Ku-chan, and I was able to free Shukaku-chan from the influence of a spirit, which I'll tell you about later, Naruto reflected. Kurama Nichan, are you there? Inquired Shukaku. I'm so glad you're okay now, Shukaku-chan. It's because of Naruto Nichan and Gaia-chan, Shukaku exclaimed happily when mentioning Naruto's name. Then Naruto sensed two people land before him and saw Konkuru and Tamari look ready to fight if Gaia hadn't intervened. Konkuru ni, Tamari Nichan, please don't attack him, he helped me, the Sand siblings were taken aback by how calmly their younger sister addressed them. Are you alright, Gaia? Tamari inquired, her gaze drawn to the blonde. I'm fine now, let's go home, she says. All right, we'll go now, Konkuru said. Before they left, Gaia turned and waved to Naruto, saying, Bye Naruto-kun, I hope to see you again, and then they left Naruto as he waved back. Bye bye Naruto Nichan, Shukaku said shyly. Well, I'd better get back and help the others, I hope Gigi's okay. Naruto said as he leapt through the trees towards the hidden leaf village. Damn Serutobi sensei and that blonde brat, they're both going to pay for sabotaging my plans. Yelled Orochimaru as he retreated from the village, both his arms rotten, while Kabuto and the other elite members of the Sound Ninja remained silent to avoid their master's wrath. So that's it for today, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you. See you all in my next video.